Hey, hello again. This is Maxim Bergeraud from 100 Things to Do with Red Hat Management Products. Um, today is the time for part two in my series around um, content views and filters in Satellite 6. Uh, today's episode will be about advanced content filtering. Now, if you do not know what a content view is or how Satellite 6 works with content views and content filters, I suggest you go take a look at part one in this series first. Uh, the link will be below in the description. Uh, to jump right in, uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about different scenarios around content filtering in Satellite 6. Um, I'm, I'm going to look at including errata by date and type in a content view, and then uh, including and excluding individual errata on top of that. We're going to look at excluding errata by date and type as well, and there is a very big caveat there, so uh, we'll talk about that in, in a couple of minutes. And finally, we'll talk about excluding individual packages um, from a content view. Um, so for now, uh, let's go take a look at my satellite for a bit. And here we are at my satellite server. So let me just log right in. Um, in the satellite server, under the content views menu, you can see that I've added three example content views for you guys. So we can take a look at a couple of different scenarios. Uh, we have example CV1, 2, and 3. So let's take a look at this one first. This is example CV1, very simple one. Uh, has two repositories enabled. Uh, basically, it's the RHEL 7 repository and the satellite tools for RHEL 7 repository. On top of those repositories, I've added a couple of very simple filters. This is just include filters right now. Uh, this should fit most patching scenarios out there. Um, basically, we add all packages without errata first, and then on top of that, we layer um, all errata that were released until November 22nd of 2016. Now, working with include filters only, and we'll do a recap in a couple of minutes, means that Everything that is not explicitly included into this content view is not in there. So everything that is not explicitly included is actually excluded. That is important to remember um, for when we go on. OK, so let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example. We go to example CV2, which is about the same as example CV1. It has the same repositories enabled. And it has mostly the same filters. It has the old packages without errata filter as well. And it also has the old errata until November 22nd include filter. But it has an extra filter added on top of that. So we basically have added an exclude filter for a single errata, in this case, an open JDK update that our developers, for some reason, are afraid of. Um, what happens if we mix include and exclude filters is that the include filters always run first. So we make a selection of content we want to add, all packages without errata, and all errata until November 22nd, and we add those to the content view. Everything else at this point is not in there anymore. And then the exclude filter runs, which in this case means that one of the errata that would normally end up in the content view without this rule is now pushed out. So if we compare example CV1, the amount of errata in there, 1747, to Con to example CV2 and the amount of errata in there, we see that it's exactly one erratum less, which is exactly what we expect. So now we move over to example CV3 to take a look at what happens if you mix and match uh, include and exclude filters in a slightly different way. Uh, we go there and we see that you have a version one of this content view that has 13,481 packages. And I've created this version of the content view. Let me go to filters by applying this single filter on top of my uh, content view. And this filter excludes all errata that were issued after November 30th. And so as you uh, might remember, the first thing we did, for, for example, CV1 and CV2 was to add all packages without errata and then layer um, errata on top of that that were, in, in those cases, released until November 22nd. In this case, we only have a single filter. So disregard the top one for now. We only have a single filter that says exclude all errata after November 30th. And the exclude filter will now include everything that is not explicitly excluded. So the first version of this content view only had this specific filter in place. And as you can see, again, it has 13,481 packages. Then for version two of this content view, I've added another rule that says include this specific erratum. And then I end up with only 74 packages. Now, you might remember I explained before that if you mix and match include and exclude filters, the first one that runs is the include filter. So the first thing that happens is this single erratum is added to the content view. It's the only one. Everything else is excluded because 
the include filter runs first and everything that is not explicitly included is excluded. And then after that, the exclude rule runs, but at that point, it doesn't really matter anymore because there's next to nothing left in the content view. So this is basically a demonstration of the caveat I was talking about in the first part of this, uh, of this screencast. You can use exclude filters, but if you use exclude filters to exclude a range of errata, so basically what I'm doing here, exclude all errata after November 30th, then including a single erratum at that point is very tricky. So that does not really do what you might expect it to do. So that's a good thing to keep in mind, and I hope that helps. Now, one quick final remark I want to make here is that if we take a look at the version two of this content view, you see that actually six errata are included, whereas my filter only includes the single erratum here. Um, the reason that my content view has six is that this add a critical erratum uh, filter that I created only affects my rel 7 server repository. So it basically allows every other um, erratum that is in this repository, this satellite 6.2 tools repository, to just end up in the in, in the content view without any problems. Now that has seven errata in there. One of them was released after November 30th, so that will be filtered out. And as a matter of fact, this one was released after November 30th as well. So basically what, we, what then happens is that if we look at version number two of this specific content view, we end up with um, only six errata from the Satellite 6.2 Tools channel. And then as a final use case, let's take a look at the CV EPEL 7 um, content view I have here. Uh, this is a content view that I've created for the enterprise package, the extra packages for enterprise Linux repository that you can get from the Fedora community. Uh, this repository has a couple of packages in there that conflict with packages that we ship with Satellite 6, uh, most notably um, packages for Cupid and um, Puppet. So what I've done here is I basically just adding this um, EPEL 7 repository, and then I'm filtering first, just normally on errata, like, like we've seen before. And then I've created rules to exclude certain packages, for example, in this case for Puppet and for Cupid. And what these rules do is they make sure that no versions of the Puppet, Hira, Ruby Shadow, and Ruby OGS packages can end up in this content view. And that is exactly um, what is happening. If we take a look at version one of this content view, we look at packages. Um, there should be no packages here that is called Hira. And there isn't. So that is working. And that makes sure that I can make um, a content view that has no packages in there that conflict with packages that come from some other source that I would prefer over a non-supported version. OK, so finally, quick recap. Satellite has include and exclude filtering rules. Include rules are always processed first. And everything that is not explicitly included by an include rule is excluded, so is removed from the content view. Exclude rules run after that, and everything that they would not explicitly exclude is included. So that is important to remember. So um, if you can, uh, my advice would be stick to use include rules only. That will make your life a lot easier. And that is basically what you've seen in the example CV1. And I realize I've spelled this wrong here. It should be example CV1, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you can still push out individual errata if you work with only include rules by excluding a single erratum by ID, and that works fine as well as we've seen in example CV2. Um, you can use an exclude rule to exclude ranges of errata as well, but it will be very hard to add individual errata after that, as you've seen uh, with example CV3. And then there is a use case for excluding individual packages, uh, as I've shown for the CV EPEL 7 repository, and uh, that works perfectly as well. Uh, be careful when excluding packages or package groups, though, because when you publish a content view in Satellite 6, there is no dependency solving done at that time. So if you, for example, try and push out the whole of the um, x.org package group, you might end up with some results that you weren't prepared for. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful. If you found if you found this useful, please click the subscribe button below. And uh, I hope to see you again in the next episode of this screencast. Thanks and goodbye.